Hey, this is Godwin Kelly, along with Ken Willis. We're at Daytona International Speedway in the Media Center. As it says right here. Right. And we've got our own special little hidey place that we're going to do our podcast from. I, I fully expect three or four people to walk in during the middle of this. So. Yeah, if you hear a lot of noise in the background, it's because we're in an unsecured area. And uh, anybody can walk in here with a camera and a microphone and do a and, podcast. And, so. a, and somebody might walk in here with a blue shirt and a badge <laughs> yeah. any minute now. I'm not sure we're supposed to be here. but uh, Anyway, we're right in the, right, you are in the belly of the beast here. We're inside a building within the garage at DIS. And we are smack dab dead in the middle of Speed Week. Or right. Speed Weeks or whatever we call it these days. It's Speed Weeks. It's speed Weeks. Yeah. Oh, we add them all. You add up all those little broken up fractured days. And it comes into days weeks, right? And it ends up being in Well, weeks. then why don't we refer to the July race as part of Speed Weeks? Because you could add that in. All we're talking about is an amount of time between the Rolex and the stock car portion of Speed Weeks. So it's just a certain amount of time between this and the July race. The, it's called the whole year of Speed Weeks. Well, first of all, it's the July, July race. July race, I'm sorry. Anyway, I, speaking of confusion. <laughs> yes, sir. Guys, uh, we're not going to bother trying to tell you who's in or out of the Daytona 500 uh, based on the 150-mile qualifying races, uh, based on the speed from last Sunday's pole qualifying. Because I have, in the old days, they would take the two, the front row, on pole day, first and second place pole runner. Right. That they, was set. They, they still do that. They still do that. Yeah. They did that in the old days and the new days. And they used to, positions three through 30 were set in the twins, the qualifying, the Thursday qualifiers. Then 31 through 36, those spots fell back to the six fastest qualifiers from pole day who right. didn't get in through the twins. Then after that, you went to your provisional starting spots. Right. Of course, now you got the top 35 guarantee. If you finished top 35 in points last year, you're guaranteed a spot in the 500, as well as the other first five races of the season. A lot of debate back and forth as to whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I tell you what, it has really confused and muddled the picture as far as who's in and out of the Daytona 500. It used to be so simple to figure it out. Nowadays, you need a uh, need one of those code breakers from Hogan's Heroes to come up. I need Kinchlow to come up out of the tunnel and, and, and let me know who's in, who's out, who might, who might not, who's uh, who's happy and who's packing the hauler. Well, you need an engineer and a calculator. An engineer and a calculator? Yeah, to figure I it guess out, if, so to, if do, I, to do ciphering. So yeah. if I, so if I mean, if we were to bring Jack Roush in, I'd be okay, probably. He Assuming would, he has a calculator. He would understand how to do this, but to, to the average layman. Layman then uh, it's a difficult uh, formula. So basically our theory is we wait till uh, Saturday night. Actually, you can wait till after the, after the qualifying races. Just look at the, then they give you the lineup for the 500. At that time, when I'm holding in my hand the lineup for the Daytona 500, yeah. I guarantee you without fail, I can tell you who's in and who's out of the Daytona 500. When you're holding the lineup. When I'm holding the lineup. Right, the final lineup for the Daytona 500. I'm part genius, <laughs> I can do that. You are, you're part genius and part vermouth. I forgot to take my hard card off. You still got yours on? Oh, yeah. See my hard, this is our hard card. This is an officially licensed NASCAR hard card. It's a media credential hard card. You'll see team, guys on teams have this. Drivers have them. The wives have them. Uh, crewmen, owners. What I love is when you, when you go this time of year and you go into a restaurant or a bar after a day at the track and you see guys in there wearing their hard card. Usually it's a media guy or it's an official or somebody's with a sponsor or something. And they like wearing this because it kind of makes them look important to the local chicks. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, and, and they sit at the bar and they let it just uh, dangle there, you know. And it's like, I, hey. I, yeah. I work out at the Speedway. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I know people. I can uh, play your cards right there. Missy, I might be able to get you a hot pass. Has it ever worked? <laughs> no, I've never, never seen it work. No, not in 30 years. I, I consider that the ultimate in dorkhood. If you leave your uh, hot, your hard card on when you go in, or credential of any kind, yeah. you go into a restaurant or bar, that is to me the ultimate dork move. Almost as bad as the little earphone thing that guys wear on their ear, which is That's, not a good look either. No, I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. So anyway, where were we? Uh, oh, what I was going to say was any girls out there, especially if, like, if my sister's watching, stay away from guys wearing hard cards. Okay, what? They're just it's, they're, these are guys that are trying a little too hard. Just okay? get, that's a public service message to all the local girls out there. Give me your uh, give me your quick impression. I don't do the, impressions. I got a head cold, so it's really uh, screwing me up. Quick, uh, your quick thoughts on oh, the first oh, weekend of racing here. Shootout. 
the shootout was a lot of fun to watch, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of getting a slight handle on the, the car of tomorrow here at the here at a plate track like Daytona. In the daytime, the track's a little slick. they got to kind of be a little more careful. But at night, when they get the grip like they had during the shootout, they can really stick that car any place on the track that they want to, so it makes them more aggressive. Well, and then another weird thing about these cars yes. is that they're between the between the skeleton frame and yes. the sheet metal, they've yeah. got this foam stuff. Yeah, like beehive. Yeah. yeah. And so that would be a honeycomb. I so when they hit the wall or they hit each other, there's there's really not a lot of damage. I mean it. <laughs> I think you go. Did Jeff Bodine or Brett Bodine design you? What are you, ticklish? Yeah. yeah. I was going to check your uh, undercarriage, but it's all right. So, uh, you mold right back into shape. So, I think Greg, I think Greg Biffle. <laughs> Look how jumpy you've gotten. Greg Biffle was involved in three different incidents. Yeah, and he finished the race. And he finished almost the race. Finished the race. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Well, you can't, it's hard to finish when you really so that's, suspension torn out. That's actually like a new element to, the, to racing here. Is, it's like Nerf cars. Yeah. And those Nerf balls, you can play with, like a Nerf ball, it's going to come right back into shape and you're not going to hurt yourself or anybody unless you stick it in the freezer for a couple of days before. But but the the upshot I is... I found out the hard way. The upshot is is that you don't know who the heck's going to win the race until the last lap. I mean... Has that not been true since 1949? No. No? no. Now, now, there have been times when the script would slip out and you could look at the script and they would tell you who's going to win the race. But it's it's more so today than in previous years because I'm trying to decipher that one there's there's this mad scramble at the end and yeah. it's like whoever gets a run usually i guess it's like on the outside now yeah, right well, it used whoever to be. gets that outside lane and gets an outside run on the outside right. lane wins the race well there for way too many years for 15 years or so the last lap pass was extinct it was gone right now and they all say it now that you'd rather be in second place than in first going right. into the last lap yeah. especially if you got somebody behind you yeah. You'd rather be in second, and that's going back to, you know, everything old is new again. And what the shootout reminded me of, with all the dicing and moving around and guys closing up on other guys and everything, it reminded me of the rules package they had on the old cars when they had all that, the strippings and all that stuff on the roof of the car back in late 2000 and, and for the 500 and 2001. Right. There was a lot of dicing, a lot of moving. Now, we all know what happened the last lap of the 2001 Daytona 500. Right. They quickly shelved that package they they got rid of that because they that was that took some of the blame for what happened to Earnhardt that year because of all the way to, the way the cars moved around a lot yeah. of people said well that you know we don't like that we didn't like the way that they moved around that kind of led to help to, uh, facilitate what happened so they got rid of that package well now these cars are basically doing the same thing they were doing then in, in many ways except the difference being the safety element now is head and shoulders light years above where they were in 01. Oh, absolutely. So you can watch all this craziness and bumping and grinding and not really feel as guilty about enjoying it because you know all the safety uh, precautions that are out there now between the safer walls and between the, the, the way the cars are put together now. It's, yeah, it's... You, you don't feel so bad about being one of them guys pump, pulling for bumping and grinding. Yeah. So what are you, what are you looking at for this weekend? I... I don't know why I just keep I, I have a I just have a Tony Stewart hunch I don't know I just just got a hunch a hunch and everybody will act like it's oh my gosh it's crazy first time out of the box with this new car but the fact of the matter is it's a Hendrick race car with Stewart Haas racing right it's know, running the show on it but it's a Hendrick race car so nobody should act shocked when Tony Stewart and or Ryan Newman are able to be right there at the end I've got no hunch this year at all no hunch? No hunch. But a little ticklish undercarriage, <laughs> don't you? Look at you. I never knew this all these years. Yeah, it's like having a new yeah I, I was a little tickly. All right, that's great. That's it for us, right? That's Until it. Until next time? Until next time. All right, see ya. We'll bid you adieu. Bye-bye. <laughs> I never knew that.